going to make you by mandate of law. Thank God for the Supreme Court. Thank God. Jesus Christ. I mean, listen, friends. If you're a righteous, decent person, you feel like you're relatively enlightened, and you can see through the madness, and you say, God Almighty, it would be so different. It will be so different. When God's will is established upon the earth, dramatically different. A sea change unprecedented in all of human history is at the door. It's imminent. The return of Christ. Allegorically, metaphorically, or real, in a real sense, literally. It doesn't matter as long as the effects are the same. But it's happening. Things are happening. In our local community, they're getting desperate to build these shelters because a judge, just one black judge, said, no, you can't kick these poor people out of the parks unless you've got a place to put them. We're spending $50 billion a year to subsidize the housing costs for poor people that can't. Yes, a social welfare program. And the problem's gotten worse. All that money every year, without fail, goes in the pockets of fat cats. And it's made the problem of unaffordable housing worse and worse and worse. I've had to witness this my whole life. I've been watching. I've been just paying attention. I'm no smarter or better than anybody else. I don't want to be. You know, burden that is. Sometimes I wish I was just freaking invisible. Oh, who doesn't? I mean, it's like God Almighty. We're such so screwed up as a species, as a race. We're so off track. Like Christ said, it's going to be when I return. To, it's like in the days of Noah, man. You people, we don't get it. It's so easy to fall into a slumber and just want to run and escape and engage in this vice or that vice, and this form of escapism or that form of escapism, and anesthetize ourselves emotionally spiritually, mentally, physically, psychologically, in, in ways that we feel like we got to run and, and have some control over our stinking little reality, our stinking little life for the brief time we're here visiting this planet. I mean, you know what it means to get it together, man, is turning to God. I can't do it. I can't save anybody's life. I can't save my own. But I could point to when I could tell you where I'm trusting. I'm saying, that's my only hope. I'm going to say what Christ said on the cross, my last breath. Into your hands I commit my spirit, Father. I know not from whence I came or where I'm going. But I'll be damn sure I appreciate life, man. Life's good. Death's bad. I don't like it. And you probably don't like it either. Because you're in your right mind. You're enlightened. You're righteous. And the reason you don't run the show and you don't have the power to change things because you and I would change things tomorrow. Today. With that power, you think God had tolerated one homeless person that didn't want to be homeless for one day? If I was had the control over the purse strings, no, then why is it going on? Why do, are the problems maintained? You know how many jobs depend on problems in our society being maintained? I'm not trying to be unnecessarily cynical. I'm saying if the shoe fits society, wear it. Why is that? And I say, it could it really be so dark as to say this is motivation. This is incentive to continue to get higher and higher rents and mortgages. For how houses are supposed to depreciate like a used car. It's a used house, for God's sake. It's supposed to go down in price. Your dollar's supposed to go up in worth under capitalism. Any semblance of true supply and demand capitalism, your dollar goes up in worth. Why? Very simply, why? Because it gets easier and easier and easier to produce all the things we, first and foremost, need. Things like food and housing, potable water, our energy needs. You understand? That's called progress. That's what humanity collectively has accumulated over the ages. We've done that. The regular, average, everyday American, blue-collar worker out there has done this. And then you're going to say, we're going to put all this burden and this national debt on your back and this inflation on your back. We get commensurate cost of living adjustment. We don't care. And we get above and beyond. We don't care about inflation. That's what evil men say to themselves and all the multitude of minions that just passively go along with, don't look at me, it's not my fault, but they benefit from the inflation. People benefit. Some people benefit and some are hurt. It's always lopsided. It always falls on the backs of those that can least afford it. Where's the Federal Labor Department in all this? They could have prevented all this currency debasement. 
if each and every year they came out and explained to people, hey, somebody's manipulating markets. Somebody's driving up the cost of living. Let's find out who. But don't blame the workers, but we're going to have to give them a commend your cost of living adjustment, the federal minimum wage workers, so we keep this country cohesive. We don't have cities having to set their own minimum wage, just scrambling, oh my God, what are we going to do? The welfare department's overwhelmed. We've got a 10-year waiting list for a Section 8 housing, and we're not even taking people on the list anymore. And you think, am I radical to talk like this? To say, God, I mean, you think that God's wrath isn't on us? Through him just lifting his hand of protection over us and we see all the things happening? How long? How bad does it have to get before we wake up? It's traumatic when you go, oh my God, crazy guys that talk like me are right. We're in trouble. I mean, don't you want God's hand of protection to return? I do. So let's demand problems get solved for God's sake. Do you know the vast majority of crime is committed from financial desperation? That we as a society are forced to pay some $100,000 a year here in California to keep one inmate in jail for one year. To get three hots and a cot, free rent, free utilities, free medical, help reintegrating. Need I go on? That we're okay with that. This madness is it's, it's, it, it, everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It's all encompassing. Our society. And we're all just sitting here. Oh, well, you know what? I just got to go to work. I got to make my bills. I can't think of I can't deal with all that stuff. It makes me crazy. Think now or think later. Pay now or pay later. You got to get on your knees and say, God, you control my opinion on issues. You give me the wherewithal to speak out against these things and to do something, whatever it is, to demand justice, fairness. For the downtrodden, for the dispossessed out there, for the desperately poor, okay, for Jesus Christ himself, who he said, that's who I am. You call yourselves a Christian nation, this is what you need to do. Act like a Christian nation. End it now. We spent $100,000 a year on rapists and child molesters and murderers, but you're not willing to spend 50000 a year on the homeless? You'd rather that well, we're good. we know this is going to spur you to commit crime. I mean, well, you got a little pride, don't you? You got to go, you can't be flat ass broke. You got to go rob some convenience store, man up, use a squirt gun. It doesn't matter. You'll be charged the same. It's armed robbery. The clerk didn't know it was a squirt gun. You see, I mean, it's just we're in it deep, a cesspool of madness. We've been sucked down, dragged down this demonic rabbit hole toward hell a long way. And it's going to take the very hand of God through the righteous, enlightened people out there to affect change. It's going to be tough because you, while you're being mocked and ridiculed and you say, well, I know, I, I feel I'm right. I believe in what I believe. Nobody respects me for that. I respect you for your beliefs. You fully believe on vaccines and the science and all that. That's, I respect you. That's fine. You might be delusional, but I might be delusional, but you got to respect me for my beliefs and my opinions because they're real and genuine. Why? To what avail am I coming up with phony beliefs? I say, well, I say I believe this, but I really don't. You understand? I mean, that's crazy talk, but yet that's the sense you get. And you have to be humble. The righteous and the enlightened have to be humble in the face of this. They've got to be polite and courteous and empathetic, and they've got to... They've got to, through compassion and mercy, it's like, read the book of Jude. It's the last book in the Bible, very short one before Revelation, but it talks about how you got to treat people and you got to say, look, I mean, I'm not, you know, we've got to let people know we're not God. I, I don't own you. My job here is to try to reach you, to try to say, you know what? It's just repentance. It's just being sorry. When, if you see the light. If, if you say, God, you manipulate my opinion on this issue. You give me the attitude. You give me the spirit you want me to have in dealing with other people, human relations. Help me to see who's causing the divide in our land and to what avail, how this profits them. Que bono, who benefits from this? All the problems in society. 
he'll tell you, you're asking for something good. You're asking for true wisdom and understanding, and you're going to get it in spades. And you know that. you got to wake up and just be honest. And that's all it requires is honesty. Yeah, it might be traumatic for you at first when you realize guys like me aren't nuts. Okay, I see the light, but I also see, the, I know why I'm not, I don't have the power because I haven't compromised my conscience. I value it very much, like I value my soul, like normal people that are gravitating to their godly nature do. Simple values like conscience and the possibility that there's a soul and it's better to be safe than sorry about these matters. I mean, you're offered eternal life in a paradise and all we have to do is trust God. Say, well, I, I got nothing else to trust out there. Might as well do that. Trust God because I don't know where I'm going from here. I don't have the control and it might be today. Okay, and all this delusion I've been taught from birth to believe in ownership. My parents believed in it, so they taught it to me, and my teachers believed it, so they taught it to me that I could actually own anything. And it's all about advantage, and you don't ever question, well, in order for me to be advantage, doesn't that by default mean that other people have to be disadvantaged? I mean, why define me as advantage? Why, are, why aren't we all born advantage from birth? Why do we have this pagan religion that's taught in our schools and in society, secular society? That it's all about money, stupid. Even King Solomon, idiot. Well, he said money is the answer for everything. But he said it, he said it mockingly. I mean, he, he didn't condone it. It's just the reality we know that's who controls the world controls the purse strings. The same people. And they manipulate us. It's a slaver class all through history. And they've had to use a roundabout way. Okay, they can't use violence. They can't use race to have a slaver class now. They've just got to use the purse strings. They've got to be very stealth and very cunning and crafty. And so it's through this juggernaut of pure evil genius that they get away and continue to get away with what they have and are getting away with. Okay, total lack of fairness and justice in society as far as economic justice for the poor. Where is it? I mean, why when a federal minimum wage job used to afford you middle class life, home ownership, one person working in the family, support the whole family, have disposable income. That's the America I used to know. So you tell me, you give me one valid excuse that will hold water. You justify that in your mind and tell me, get back with me. You see me on the streets. Let me know what you come up with. How, how do you justify that? Where is the Federal Labor Department? Aren't they wholly justified in coming out and protecting the standard of living for the federal minimum wage worker? Give me one reason why they're not. Why? How do you justify that when other people get above and beyond what the, what the cost of living going up is that's being manipulated? through price rigging, price fixing. This is collusion of various groups that benefit, for example, of driving your housing costs up. The lenders benefit because they work on a commission, so the higher the prices go, the greater is their commission. The real estate agents, landlords, just to name a few off the top of my head, okay? Figure it out, friends. Speculators, investors, flippers, gentrifiers, they all benefit from rising housing costs. Okay, and then you got the mainstream media in there telling you, well, this is great. This is wonderful. They don't tell you that, it, that it's wonderful that a minority of California residents are homeowners. They don't tell you that both food and housing are basic, essential human needs. Shelter, food, duh. And that for you to say it's good that housing values are going up, then it's the same thing. Why aren't they in the media telling us that while well, we see rising prices in the grocery stores, that, hey, it's a good thing. The value of your food is rising. You understand the madness? Do you, do you see what I'm seeing? This is crazy. This is crazy. So the Federal Labor Department is obviously in the pockets of evil men. Because they could have easily prevented this runaway cost of living inflation, currency debasement, watering down your money, 
right? It goes further if they do that. And why don't the evil men care? Because they take above and beyond. They're controlling things. They do whatever they want. We talk about the richest men in the world, and Elon Musk is nearly the first trillionaire. And, uh, but we don't ever talk about